Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? I always ask that of all my prey. I just like the sound of it. Hi, welcome to my first in a series of Batman movie reviews for the month of July. Happy 4th of July, by the way. Now, Batman is hands down my favorite superhero of all time. Originally, I was going to do two separate reviews, but today I'm going to be doing a review for two movies, Tim Burton's Batman and Tim Burton's Batman Returns. Enjoy. So, Tim Burton's Batman, released in 1989, and really was kind of, at the time, seen as the gritty reboot for the Batman series. Now we think of like the Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins as like the modern gritty reboot, but at that time audience were so used to like things like the Adam West Batman series that the idea of sort of a gritty, violent Batman film was sort of unthinkable, and let me tell you, the first Batman movie did leave quite an impact, and frankly, even today, its influence is still being felt. Now, Tim Burton's first Batman movie is great. Uh, it stars Jack Nicholson as Jack Napier and the titular Batman villain, the Joker. Michael Keaton as Batman and Bruce Wayne. Uh, Michael Goh as Alfred Pennyworth. Kim Basinger as Vicki Vale. And Jack Palance as Bosch Grisham. It also stars Billy Dee Williams as Harvey Dent. Though he never went on to play Two-Face, unfortunately, which I would have loved to see. Now... The plot of the first Batman movie is basically, uh, people don't really know much about who this Batman guy is. He's sort of taken out a couple of criminals, and some people were very superstitious about who he is. And over the movie, we sort of learn more about who Batman is and who Bruce Wayne is. We get more of their backstory. Now, Jack Napier basically plays um, a hired gun for a crime boss, and... He is seen or suspected of having an affair with the crime boss's mistress or wife, and uh, the crime boss tries to off him, but instead of killing him, um, when he is first encountered by Batman, he's sort of accidentally knocked into a vat of chemicals or acid and comes out and basically becomes the Joker. And basically, the Joker starts killing people left and right, even advertising it on TV, and over the course of the film, uh, Batman figures out how to stop him and uh, basically does. Now, there's a bit of a love triangle story, too. Uh, Kim Basinger's character plays Bruce Wayne's love interest, who the Joker also has a fancy for. And so, throughout the second act, half of the film, there's sort of that going on, uh, because the Joker is basically a creep. Now, performance-wise, Michael Keaton absolutely kills it as Batman. Like, he got Batman right. But, he's only a so -so Bruce Wayne. I feel like Bruce Wayne's supposed to sort of be this buffoonish, yet really likable playboy, but this Bruce Wayne is sort of very much a recluse. He's, like, always in his mansion and always wearing a weird turtleneck. Now, don't get me wrong, it works for this Tim Burton's interpretation, but I just feel like, you know... For Bruce Wayne, I'm looking for something a little more, but don't get me wrong, as Batman, he's amazing. Like, he's very dark and mysterious, but very brutal, and just, his voice is great, just like, I'm Batman! Obviously, it was a little more subdued than that, but, and, now I want to talk about Jack Nicholson as the Joker, because I feel like, and I agree with this, that Heath Ledger was the def is the definitive Joker still, but that's not to say that Jack Nicholson did a bad performance, far from it. He did a very good job for the role and script he was given as the Joker. Now, I feel like Jack Nicholson kind of is playing himself. I know there's that's kind of a meme, but there is merit to it. Like, even before he turns into the Joker, he already kind of, you know, acts like a crazy psycho. And he, it's really just sort of augmented by turning into the Joker. He sort of kills people in, like, wacky ways, but still, like, you know, it's just hard not to say, well, well there's crazy Jack. It's also funny because his real name's character is also Jack, Jack Napier, which is very close to Nicholson's real name. Um, Michael Goh is great as Alfred. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is the scenery. 
I think that the scenery, like, just the way, the visual appearance of the movie, it, it's a very dark and gritty, but also very visually appealing movie to look at. Like, it really does manage to capture the essence of the comic books, but in sort of the real world Gotham City. It's got this very noirish, sort of gothic 1940s look to it. I know that, um, Tim Burton has a very, like, specific visual style for all of his movies, and it came out in the Batman film very well, and overall I think it actually does really work. I feel like the love story is a little bit, I mean, obviously love stories are kind of hard to do in superhero movies in general, because, you know, as guys, at least as me being a guy, I like to see, you know, the, just the action stuff. But even then, I feel like it was a little, like, under, just not very well developed. It's It just seems, a lot of it seems very rushed and very forced. And I feel like they could have played that a little bit, a little bit better. But overall, the first Batman movie is great. Uh, definitely one of the better Batman movies. Definitely my top five and probably one of the better superhero movies in general. And that was before the golden age of superhero was anywhere close to starting. Now the second Batman movie I'm going to talk about is Batman Returns, also directed by Tim Burton. And I think in this one is in many ways just as good as the first one. I know people have more polarizing opinions about this one, but I personally love it. It stars Michael Keaton once again as Bruce Wayne and Batman. Now that he's already sort of fleshed out his origin story, we get to see more like of, you know, Batman and Bruce Wayne this time around. We get to see like... The fight scenes with him were a lot more grittier and a lot more sort of fast-paced. And we finally get some really good, like, sort of duality, I think. We had that a little bit in the first one, obviously, with the Joker. But this one introduces Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, who starts out as a secretary for this evil sort of um, businessman named Max Shrek, who runs this sort of textile company. and. She sort of stumbles upon one of his dirty secrets and he attempts to kill her, but she's basically resurrected by cats, thus becoming Catwoman and going crazy. And of course, she, as Selena Kyle, falls in love with Bruce Wayne. And as Catwoman, she's sort of semi, you know, in love with Batman, but also very much at odds with Batman. So they're sort of like rivals, but also love interests. It's an interesting sort of idea, and it, it works for the most part. And Danny DeVito as the Penguin, who I think steals the show. The Penguin in this version is absolutely terrifying, but also somewhat sympathetic. We learn about his backstory, about how he was actually born in not too dissimilar circumstances to Bruce Wayne or Batman. But because he was born differently, deformed, his parents basically dropped him in a river and... He floated into the sewer where he was basically raised by penguins and circus performers. Now, throughout this story, the penguin is basically makes a deal with Max Shrek, and Max Shrek agrees to help him run for mayor. And over the course of the film, Batman is thinks he's up to no good from the start, but the rest of the city basically starts becoming infatuated with the penguin or Oswald Cobblepot. And throughout the story, there's sort of this sort of this trifecta or, you know, four really big character stories going on between Batman and Catwoman and the Penguin and Max Shrek, which also circles around back to Catwoman because she wants to get him and Max Shrek. Max Shrek wants to serve the Penguin and the Penguin is, Batman is suspicious of the Penguin while also suspicious of Catwoman. Now, it might seem like there's a lot of characters to keep track of, but the way the story is told is just so tight and well done that you never really feel confused about what's going on. Now, there are... I want to say that this movie probably does have some slight hiccups at times, but even then, it's like the first one, another Grand Slam Batman movie, and a really great one, I think. And I would highly recommend that you watch both of these films. Uh, Tim Burton, I think, next to Christopher Nolan, is the second best director to ever touch the Batman live-action universe. And I would definitely recommend you watch these movies. If you've already seen them, go back and watch them. If you've never seen them, go and watch them. Um, I'm going to give both of these films 
a four smiley faces and a half smiley face out of five. I really, really do like these movies a lot. In fact, I'd say I love them. Um, the next Batman movie I'm going to review is the one where it started to go downhill. Uh, Batman Forever, which is where Joe Schumacher came. Then after that, I'm going to review the infamous Batman and Robin. Don't worry, after that I'll review the good, the good stuff. Guys, thank you so much for watching my review of Tim Burton's Batman and Tim Burton's Batman Returns. If you enjoy these reviews, please subscribe to my channel and please tell me in the comments what's your favorite Batman movie, who's your favorite Batman, who's your favorite Joker, who's your favorite whatever. And tell me um, just what you thought of these movies overall if you have seen them. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, peace out. I'm Batman! Bada 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 Batman!